The Psychology of Atheism is a 54-minute lecture by Paul C. Witz, in which Witz attempts to perform a psychological analysis of what he calls strong atheists, by which he means people to whom atheism is an important part of their lives. Witz also expounded these ideas in far greater detail in his book Faith of the Fatherless, The Psychology of Atheism, originally published in 1999 and republished in 2013. In this video and his book, he offers the thesis that male atheists often arise as a result of what he calls deficient fathers. In full disclosure, all of the male figures in my life, father, stepfather, grandfather and clergy, were deficient according to Witz's definition. However, as a boy who yearned for God to be the protective and nurturing father figure that the other men in my life were not, it was God's inability to perform that led me to atheism, not that of the male role models in my life. Witz holds the position of Professor Emeritus of Psychology at New York University, where, according to Wikipedia, his work focuses on the relationship between psychology and Christianity. Witz is himself a former atheist who converted to Catholicism, and I would suggest that this shows that his interest in the subject is far more than merely scholarly, as I think will be evident as we proceed through his presentation. Why are there atheists? Why are there people who do not believe in God? And of course, if you mention that to an atheist, he's likely to say, it's obvious. The reasons for God's existence are not convincing. The evidence is not convincing. In fact, they find oftentimes that the evidence is convincing the other way. And this is too, true. This is true. Some people are atheists because of the evidence and because of the arguments, because of the logic that they find about God to be defective. But I'm a psychologist. And although people can believe things because they're reasonable, I think many people believe things not because they're reasonable, or at least in part they don't believe it because they're reasonable. They believe it because they have psychological reasons for believing it. Now one of the oldest criticisms of people who believe in God, a criticism that was first developed by atheists actually, is that they believe in God because it's psychologically satisfying for the believer. It seems to me that this entire thesis is going to be an example of a Christian saying, I know you are, but what am I? This is a trick played often, trying to undermine the atheist's position by claiming that they are just as bad as the theist. What I hear when theists use this tactic is, I'm irrational, but so are you. Hardly a convincing argument. Now this is called the ad hominem argument. In other words, you're arguing that something isn't true because of what it means to the person who has the belief. An ad hominem is when you attack the person rather than his argument. Pointing out that theism may be the result of a psychopathology is part of the argument that God is not a rationally arrived at position. It explains why theists believe in God. If the argument were exclusively that God does or does not exist, then you could say that pointing to the psychological placebo effect of God to the theist was an ad hominem. Ironically, over the next hour, Witz will do precisely the same thing to atheists, trying to prove that atheism is the result of psychopathology, not whether it is a valid position to hold. But what I would like to discuss today is evidence that's, that atheists also have reasons for disbelieving in God and that there are psychological reasons that underlie many an atheist's position. At this point, Witz is making the reasonable suggestion that atheism may be more likely given certain psychological events. He appears not to be making any judgment on the validity of atheism, but given his conversion from atheist to Catholic, his impartiality and motivation must be considered. He lays out his inspiration for embarking upon this endeavour. In addition, I had another reason for being interested in this, and that was that I began, uh, just for other interests, to read some of the biographical uh, material about atheists. I began to read about their lives. And as I did, I picked up a particular theme that I wondered about, and eventually it was all clarified and precipitated when, of all things, I read a statement by Sigmund Freud. And here's what Freud said. I'm paraphrasing, but I think I'm pretty 
accurate here. <clears throat> Freud said, nothing is more familiar than to find a young person stop believing in God as soon as he loses respect for his earthly father. In other words, it's hard to believe in God if your own father is unworthy of respect or is in some important way defective. In particular, I came up with a hypothesis that's a little more general than Freud's, and it can be called the defective father hypothesis. In other words, that a father, if, if he's defective, sets up a strong pressure, not a totally determining one, but a strong, pre a strong pressure toward atheism on the part of his children. Particularly, I would think, young, intelligent, sort of intellectually oriented boys. And as I read the literature, I thought about the ways in which a father can lose, lose his son's respect. And I came up with three of them, three objective criteria for a defective father. One of them is a father can be defective because he rejects and abandons his family. A father can be defective because he's abusive, stays in the family, doesn't reject them, but he's abusive and critical and hostile, a tyrant at home. A father can be defective because he dies. In the following clip, Vitz unwittingly shoots himself in the foot. Any one of those makes for what I call a defective father. And the argument psychologically is, is the following. If your father is defective, it makes it very hard to believe in God. And Freud proposed that because Freud himself saw that our earthly father is somehow or other a kind of psychological model of our understanding of who God is. And so if our psychological model of God, based on our own experience, is defective, disturbing, disappointing, unworthy of respect, then it sets up a strong precondition for the uh, child, when he becomes older, to become an atheist. He indirectly acknowledges that the Christian view of God is shaped by our human concept of what a father is or should be. And thus, those with defective fathers have negative or defective images of God. In a sense, this even takes such arguments made against this out of the field of being ad hominems, and back into the realm of analysing whether or not God is a credible proposition in the first place. Of course, what he leaves unspoken is the fact that even within the theistic worldview, the nature of God is constructed entirely from our experience or imagination of leader figures. In the beginning, man is created first, reflecting the patriarchal nature of ancient man. Then, in the Old Testament, God is a wrathful, vengeful martinet who reflects the morality of that era. As man himself evolves in terms of compassion and tolerance, so too does the nature of God. If there is ever an argument that undermines the truth of God's existence, it is this fact. And it's very testable. We can look at evidence. So let's look at some of the evidence. And here's what I did. I looked at the, child, the childhood of many of the famous atheists in history. Uh, these are almost all... Uh, philosophers or political thinkers, almost all of them are well known because I'm only interested in what I would call strong atheists or intense atheists. <clears throat> People for whom atheism was an important part of their life. Vitz never mentions exactly how many strong atheists he looks at and it's worth mentioning that from a statistical point of view studies of less than a thousand people are not considered to have much merit. I think that we can reasonably assume that Witz didn't go into the lives of even 50 atheists, and probably not even 25. A statistically insignificant number. I'd also like to know whether this was a random selection, or if he discarded those who didn't match his thesis. But even if we grant that he did a comprehensive and impartial study selecting atheists at random, there's a vital phrase there. Uh, these are almost all... Uh philosophers or political thinkers, 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 thinkers. Hmm, I can't quite put my finger on it. There's a phrase that applies here. Correlation does not equal causation. 
there are lots of what I would call mild atheists or rather uh, soft atheists. These are people who are atheists uh, but not preoccupied with it. I suggest that Vitz would have to revisit his thesis in the internet age. Easy access to atheist communities and ideas have given atheism an appeal to progressives, people interested in justice, truth and a younger demographic. This group, whilst passionate about atheism, is far too large and came to atheism far too lightly for the motivations that he describes to apply to the majority. And I made up a list of these famous thinkers and atheists and then I made up a list of other historical figures who were in the same cultures at the same time, roughly, but who were believers, who were famous theists, people who often argued with these atheists or at least were publicly arguing uh, the pro-belief position. And if you will, the control group consists, consists of the theists <coughs> and the experimental group consists of the atheists. Here, Witz reveals his fundamental bias and his inability to follow good methodology. You don't choose as a control group people who have the polar opposite condition to that which you are testing. The control group should be chosen from people with the neutral position. At best, the control group should be agnostics, people who are uncertain about the existence or not of God. In part two, Witz gives a few specific examples of famous atheists with deficient fathers in order to pad out his thesis and I analyze his choices. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.